Dow Meeting Archives, December 6, 2015. The Holidays by Bill Munting. Let's uh, go ahead and get started. Xili, Nian Xiao Po Tao, San Jia San Ju Gong, Yi Ju Gong, Zai Ju Gong, San Ju Gong, San Jia, Go Yi Dian Chen Xi Ju Gong, Kai Ban Yi Ju Gong, Qing Zuo Xia, Please be seated. Uh, Bill, we're ready to rock and roll, and let me go ahead and mute the microphone on this end. Thanks so much, and good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening, or wherever you happen to be in whatever time zone you happen to be in. Welcome. From where I sit to, to uh, participate in the online study group, I can look out my, my back door to the trees that, that line our street and, and our backyard. And this morning, uh, when I got up, it was about 7.30, everything was covered in frost. It was uh, about 27 degrees outside. It had been cloudy and misty most of the evening, and everything was, was frosty. Now it's a, a little warmer, and the frost has melted and turned to water on the leaves that are still on the trees, and the sunlight coming through the, the leaves and the water droplets hanging from them is just the most beautiful thing you ever wanted to see. We tend to think of winter as a, uh, a time of, uh, what, desolation, death, the period before renewal, kind of a gray and dismal time of year around here uh, in uh, all parts north. And, and even as things in nature around us up here are expiring, there still is, is tremendous beauty in them. And I, I choose to see those things not as an end, but, but as a promise of a beginning. I'm, I'm hoping, as I hope every year, uh, that I'll be allowed to live to see one more spring. And in, in seeing one more spring, realize once again that promise of renewal. Every year about this time must have something to do with that whole December 25th thing. I usually do a talk that has something to do with the holidays. And this year is no difference. I'm going to do a talk that has something to do with holidays. <laughs> All over the Western world, uh, Christmas is a, a big deal. It is uh, to, to the Western world very much uh, as the Chinese New Year celebration is uh, to China. It's, it's the, the biggest holiday on the calendar. It's uh, uh, the time of year when, when we're all supposed to uh, uh, get into that giving and receiving spirit and uh, uh, have the biggest party that we have throughout the year, I guess, if you want to call it that. It's interesting when we examine the history of Christmas, how we came by this, this particular holiday. Um, <laughs> it is, as, as everyone knows, uh, or started out supposedly to commemorate the birth of Jesus Christ on December the 25th, uh, somewhere around 2,000 years ago. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, the science doesn't support the supposition that Jesus was born on December 25th. It's uh, much more likely, according to the historical record, that he was born sometime in October. As it turns out, the Christmas holiday uh, was shuffled around on the calendar to coincide more closely with a, an already existing pagan holiday called Yule. It's one of the, uh, one of the holy Sabbaths in the, in the uh, pagan calendar. And since the, the newly struggling Christian church was in need of a holiday or two, it made a, a wonderful opportunity uh, to have a holiday that could be kind of kind of set up and, and organized for the, the faithful to, to, to participate in. Most of the trappings of the Christmas holiday 
do not stem from Christianity either. Uh, <laughs> The, the Christmas tree comes to us from the Germanic tribes, uh, which, uh, while the Chinese were spinning silk, inventing gunpowder, and uh, warring between their various states, uh, most of the Germanic tribes were still crawling out of caves and wearing animal skins. Uh, and part of their Yule celebration was to celebrate the evergreen tree which didn't die in the winter and which was relatively plentiful in their environment. Kind of a, kind of a nifty marker for a, a, a period of time in nature where most everything else is, is deceased and brown and decaying. I find it fascinating that over our, our historical time that we've managed to uh, kind of glom onto these various and sundry traditions and, and try to focus uh, their their energy and their their representation to a uh, <laughs> to a uh, historical event and then uh, to further be used to try to admonish people to be the people they ought to be I don't intrinsically have a problem with the practice of Christmas. I, I think uh, in, in my lifetime I've seen it become way too doggone commercial uh, and, and way too doggone secular and not nearly enough about uh, what its original intent might have been and whether that original intent was pagan spiritualism or uh, the, the Christian worship of Jesus Christ as the Son of God is an irrelevancy to me. It's the point that at one point in time, uh, that festival was, was meant to mark a, a highly spiritual and significant occasion. Still and all, we do the best that we can, I think. Uh, somewhere in all of the shopping and spending and agonizing and worrying and carrying on that goes along with the holiday season to try to remember that the holidays are supposed to be that, that period of time where, where we think about being the people perhaps we always should have been, the people we thought we should be. And that's the thing that, that fascinates me the most in watching the quirks and foibles of human nature. We spend 364 days out of the calendar year screwing our neighbors, beating up our business associates, and trying to uh, claw and scrape for everything that we can get. And on that 365th day, then we turn around and preach peace on earth, goodwill to men, and try to make amends for, for an entire year uh, of past sins. And I'm astounded at the number of people who actually do that. There was a period in my life when I was on my way to becoming a Southern Baptist minister. That's absolutely the truth. I couldn't bring myself to do it. By the time I was 16, I knew that I could not live up to, to the, the, the person that the New Testament said I was to become after I was supposedly saved and baptized. Couldn't do it. That led me to, to many years of anxiety and stress because I was sure that I was fatally flawed in the establishment of the Christian path in my life and that no one called into the ministry should be anywhere near as horrible a person as I really was. <laughs> what I learned much later in life was that, that what I needed was a, a better, more realistic set of answers and a transformation that came from within rather than from without. That's what I found here. In following the Tao teachings, I've learned to try to be the person I always thought I should be every day. Not just when it's convenient because of a day on the calendar 
or because some TV commercial says I ought to be, or because we get all sentimental watching the TV shows that we watched when we were children and something emotional moves inside of us and all of a sudden we're full of the grace of God and the mercy. But because being the people we thought we should be is the right way to be. I've learned to try to end conflict. As part of the research I did for, for talking to you this morning, I, I searched the internet for two things in particular. And, and I didn't find enough information on either of them to quote a source. But both of them I, I find uh, saddeningly fascinating. I went out and searched for what the longest period of peace has been in the world. The longest period of time during which two people weren't trying to bash each other's brains in. And in all of the sites that I looked at, the longest hypothetical period of peace on this planet was 46 years. But that didn't count regional conflicts and skirmishes. And most of the scholarly sites agree that there has never in all of human history been a period of continual peace on this planet. The one thing that gives me hope for humanity occurred in World War I across the Allied and, and German trenches, the British trenches in particular, where on Christmas Eve, I believe it was uh, uh, 1917 19, or 1918, but I'm not completely sure. If somebody knows, please speak up. For a, a brief moment, in time, about 12, 15 hours or so, there was peace in, in, in no man's land, the area above the trenches and beyond the barbed wire, the place where, where you just didn't want to go during the fighting because there was no cover. There wasn't anywhere to hide. If you went up there, you were going to get shot. And on one side or the other, in the middle of that night, Someone was singing Silent Night, and on the other side of the trenches, someone else joined in the song. What happened after that can only be described as miraculous because the two enemy sides facing each other at no more than a couple hundred feet took the chance of, of coming into no man's land and the risk of being cut down cleanly. And they met British soldier and German soldier and exchanged sugar and chocolate and pictures of their loved ones and families. And all of a sudden, they weren't faceless enemies to be gunned down and dehumanized. They were other people. So much so that on the following day, the British High Command had to issue orders that the British troops would fire on the Germans or they'd be shot for high treason. We all have it within us to end conflict. We all think, gee, what can I do? I'm just one person. How do I contribute to... To, to making the world a better place. What can I do to ease the suffering of others? In a lot of cases, I can barely afford to feed my own family. How the hell am I going to help somebody else? But becoming the people that we always thought we should be isn't a matter of trying to save the world. It's simply a matter of refining and improving the, the self. It's ending conflict, not with strangers, uh, with people we don't know in situations that aren't, aren't ours to be in, 
but ending conflict between ourselves and the people with whom we have conflict. To choose a way of peace rather than to go kick that person in the shins again tomorrow morning. Or when that person comes to kick us in the shins, choosing not to respond with anger and violence and hatred in our hearts and minds. We can all do that. We may not get it right 100% of the time, but we can all try. And eventually, if we try enough, we'll get it right. We can choose not to exhibit our righteous road rage <laughs> at all of the people on the road who don't drive nearly as well as we do. And of course, in my case, that's nearly everybody. <laughs> we can choose not to become indignant when we have to wait in the line. We can choose to perhaps be a little more compassionate, a little more intolerant of those we do not know and those who need our help. Those things don't occur initially nation to nation and country to country. They occur person to person, heart to heart, and soul to soul. What the other person chooses to do when we decide to end the conflict is up to them. We can't control that. But we can control what we choose. And so, you know, this year, I'm asking you all with me to choose to end the conflict, to choose peace, to choose nonviolence and non-contention, wherever you are, where, whatever you happen to be doing. I want to encourage everyone to, to learn to give. And all of a sudden, I hear a million minds thinking, but I just put 200 Christmas presents under a tree. Well, yes, we, we do that. But there are places out there and people out there who don't need 100 presents under a tree, but they sure could use somebody to be a, a smiling face handing out a plate of food or a warm blanket. There will always be those who are less fortunate than we are all over the world. No matter how blessed or unblessed we believe ourselves to be. No matter how bad we think our lives suck, there's always somebody out there whose lives suck worse than ours do. If you have uh, food in your refrigerator and a roof over your head and clean water to drink, and a warm bed to sleep in at night that's dry and comfortable, you're already doing better than two-thirds of the people on the, on the face of this planet. And so perhaps learning to give for us isn't necessarily always a financial thing or a tangible thing, but it's a service thing. Maybe to reach out a hand to someone who simply needs uh, a little a little lift to get going. Once again, not things that are typically done nation to nation or country to country, things that have to be done one person to one person. Where we make a choice to be the person we thought we should be, no matter what the other person thinks. Perhaps it's that time to help someone by giving them back their dignity and a little bit of their self-respect. By not being condescending towards them when we, when we encounter them. Does it make any difference really what the homeless guy is going to do with the five or ten bucks you give them? If it does, and then perhaps we need to examine our own motives for giving. The wonderful thing about giving is that once we learn to do it correctly, 
from a heart on which the door opens widely out. At that moment, we also learn to receive. And it only works one way. One can never learn to give from a perspective of greed and, and pride and want and uh, acquisition. It just doesn't work. But the second the door of that heart is opened outwards with compassion and tolerance and honesty, with some sincerity, then the pathway for the blessings to flow in is nearly unlimited. Now, does that mean you're going to get overwhelmingly wealthy doing that? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. The ordained masters that I know, I will tell you, everyone does this. And they all have done very well for themselves. I try to do it, and I have never had a day in my life since I started cultivating the Tao teachings where uh, my children have gone hungry or my wife has gone homeless or, you know, we've been completely and utterly destitute. I can be content with that for right now. The more I learn, the better I figure I'll do. But there's a reason why I'm not a sage or a bodhisattva yet. <laughs> and that would be one of the reasons. I do, however, understand the importance of the lesson. I think this is the time of year where we should get out our compassion and our tolerance. If, if the Christmas holiday season inspires us to be more of the people we, we always thought we should be, then by all means. You know, use that compassion and that tolerance to help somebody else. So we aren't just ending the conflict or learning how to give, but so that we extend uh, perhaps the gift of a, a good example, a little knowledge, a little wisdom to someone who's looking like I was once upon a time for a better set of answers. Maybe we can be a, a flashlight on the path for somebody who's, who's looking for a, a different way to do it a better set of answers, a different set of questions. When I was uh, uh, yeah, yeah, much younger, uh, 13, 14, 15, 16 years old, those answers didn't exist here. There was no Iguando in the American Midwest. There very nearly still isn't. Although it's a lot better than it used to be. <laughs> There wasn't really any place you could go and find this set of answers. I knew they existed because I read everything I could get my hands on, but it wasn't until I met Derek that I found the authentic set of solutions, the real set of answers. I have loved that man ever since, and to this day consider him to be my older now brother and infinitely more wise than I can ever hope to be. Thank you very much. You all have the ability to be that person for someone else. We deserve or, or owe it to those people, I should say, to at least try to be that person. Once again, we can't be responsible for the choices of another, but we can always be an example to them. And so at this time of the year where we're supposed to be thinking that way, great, let's think that way. Let's go be that good example. And maybe we can do that a little past Christmas and keep it up for 364 more days or so. In short, what I'm talking about is creating a better year one day at a time for us and for our children, for the people we know and the people we don't know. For those of us that are gathered here in this group, for those of us who have the karmic affinity for the Tao teachings, we become signposts along the way for others who maybe have the affinity but haven't realized it yet, or for people who are looking for what they have the affinity for but don't know what the right question is yet. The time for the spreading of the Tao teachings if, is now if there ever was one. 
the need to change the way that, that human beings operate on this planet is absolutely dire. And it's changing way too slowly. But we hold a set of answers that can help that situation one person at a time. If only we have the courage to be that person we thought we ought to be. The other thing that just fascinates the stuffings out of me is why we make New Year's resolutions. And here in just a couple of short weeks, I'm going to hear a million of them. <laughs> Most of them having to do with quitting smoking, losing weight, or not eating that second bag of potato chips. And by Oh, the end of January, most of those resolutions will have sunk like the Titanic. And once again, I will be left wondering why, why do we do this to ourselves? I, I have a suggestion for a, a relatively achievable New Year's resolution. <laughs> Can we all resolve on, on December the 31st before the ball drops? to try to be that person we, we thought we should be, if not for 364 days, then, then just for tomorrow. And maybe at the end of New Year's Day we can, we can think about doing it again on the second. And who knows, maybe we can keep it up for a week or two. I think that's a, an aspiration worthy of pursuing and a goal worthy of achieving. I hope you all have a wonderful and very blessed holiday season, whatever your particular faith is. I hope the blessings of the holiday stay with you your entire lives. And I hope you have a wonderful and prosperous new year. And I hope that, that all of you within the sound of my voice will try to follow me down that path. And that maybe one day we all actually get there. Thanks so much for letting me share with you. Have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday. I'll go ahead and do the, the meeting closing ritual. So let's go ahead and do it together. TV. We are done. Thanks, everybody. Join the Dow Meeting Live to participate in the questions and commentary. For more information, go to http colon slash slash taoism.net slash tao slash connect dash online.